Guys, I looked at the program and it said mindset. And what I'm going to share with you this morning, and thanks for showing up this early. You guys, you know, who was a famous person that said half the battle is just showing up? So you guys could have been anywhere today on this beautiful North Idaho uh, Saturday, and you're here to spend with us, and uh, it's going to pay off. So this stuff is so far beyond mindset. Joe just was up here saying it changed her life. What I'm going to share with you today uh, changed my life. And my intention is that someone is going to take this material and this awareness that they're going to get from this hour that we're going to spend together, and your life and your business and your health and your relationships will be changed profoundly forever. Can anyone uh, see that that could possibly happen? It just happened in this lady, so. Anyway, let's jump in here. Um, this is going to be, I want this to be interactive, guys. I don't want to sit up here for an hour and talk, so if at any point in time you have a question, we're going to do some exercises. Whether, you, whether it's during the exercises or not, just raise your hand. Um, totally, totally uh, approachable on any question that you have. And vulnerability is a superpower, as you just saw. Joe got up here and was very vulnerable. I'm going to be more vulnerable. The more vulnerable you can be, uh, I think the, the more joy or, uh, joyous and the more deeply connected relationships you can have. So be vulnerable, raise your hand, don't be shy. So every problem that you have, I'm sure no one has any problems in this room, but if they did have a problem, every single problem in this room is a thinking problem, and that thinking problem is not your fault. Who has heard, change your thoughts, change your life? Anyone heard that? But does anyone really know what that is? Is it, Just go home and, and change your thoughts, right? Everything will be fine. You like to eat a lot, just say you don't like to eat. It's harder than that, right? There's a reason it's hard. But we're gonna today show you some incredible tools and give you some insights that will show you that it's not impossible. So my old life was very different from my life now. Uh, two divorces, and the reason I put that one uh, truth up there was I really did leave my first wife because she was abusive. I actually left her, the night I left her, I was thinking she was gonna kill me. And why is that? Because we often match to the level of trauma that we had as a kid. So my dad was abusive. He hit me with a belt, he made fun of me. So I went and picked the spouse because my subconscious brain said, my job isn't to keep you happy, it's just to keep you safe. So we often recreate that. So that's why I put that on there. So two divorces, uh, $9 million in between 2005 and 2017, I made five business mistakes. And I'm a real estate investor. I made five business mistakes that cost my partner and I $9 million. And I'll touch on that in a couple minutes. And then I was a regular user of weed and alcohol. There was years where I smoked weed literally every single night of my life. And my lie was, it helps me sleep at night. And that's not the truth. It may help you go to sleep, but if you're drinking or you use weed at night, it messes up your REM sleep. And REM sleep is one of the most important things to regenerate in your body and your mind and your, your um, mental. So well, this is my old self, and we're, we're going to get to my new self in a couple of minutes. But why was I this person? What, what was driving me, right? I had to get to the root to figure out why can I stand on this stage and why can I help people like Joe radically transform their lives? I did some work. And look, I can't work with everyone in this room right now on an hour basis, but we're going to give you some little tools and tricks. But what I had to do, I had to get to the root of what was causing me these issues, right? If you want to solve any type of mental distress, or any type of physical uh, ailment. How do you solve it? You gotta get to the root, right? Most doctors and psychologists wanna focus on the symptoms. Oh, you got anxiety, let's teach you how to breathe. Well, no one was born with anxiety, no one was born with depression, no one was born with eating disorders. It was learned behavior, usually between the ages of zero and 10. So if it was learned, we can unlearn it, right? But how do you unlearn it when you don't know where it started? So we have to get to the root of it. So on your table, you guys have got um, a packet I want you to focus on me for now, and then we're gonna take a couple minutes, play some deeply relaxed music, hopefully no one falls asleep, and you guys are gonna fill this out. But I want you to understand, this is the first tool that could shed some light on some life-changing things in your life. So how do we get to the root of it? So one of my goals it was to be the first agent team to ever sell a billion dollars in one year. Does anyone, has anyone had a similar goal in terms of Revenue numbers if you're an agent or an investor. I want to I want to I want to flip I want to make two hundred thousand dollars this year or I want to sell three million dollars worth of real estate. Anyone in this room have those goals? Okay. Uh, anything wrong with having those goals? No. It's not 
as long as they're driven by the right things. And we're going we're gonna to see as we go through this exercise that sometimes our behavior, or almost all the time, our behavior is driven by something deeper. Sometimes it's good and oftentimes it's bad. So that was my dream, right? You, I want you guys to think about why are you in this room today? What did you come here for? What was your business goal this year? We're getting near 2025, so hopefully you guys are planning for your goals for next year. What are your 2025 goals? So think about that. So what you do is you ask, this was made famous by Dean Graziosi. Anyone know who Dean Graziosi is? Yeah, big real estate guy. He actually has a website that, that does this. But So why was that important to you? Why was, the, why was it important for me to be the first agent to ever sell a billion dollars? Well, because nobody else ever heads on it, and it would make me famous, and it would make me tons of money. I thought having tons of money would bring me happiness. Why is that important to me? Why is number two important to me? To get recognition and fame, which I thought would make me happy and give me freedom. I had a coaching company seven years ago that was called Brad Chandler Coaching, coaching you to freedom, and I thought you got freedom from money. If you think you got freedom from, get money, freedom from money, ask, ask Matt Perry, well you can't because they're all dead, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. We don't get freedom from money. We get freedom from one thing and one thing only, and that's, that's self-love and self-compassion. That's it. When you can connect with yourself and you can be happy no matter what's happening outside, that's true freedom. So why is that? Why was that important to me to get recognition? It was to prove to the world that I was smart, capable, and could do whatever I wanted. Why? Because I probably didn't feel smart and capable. I didn't, my conscious mind didn't tell me that. My conscious mind woke up and said, no, you can do this. But my subconscious mind that controls 95% of your behavior on a daily basis was screaming something different. So why was, why was proving that I was smart important? It's because I wanted to feel like I was smart and capable and not beholden to anyone else. So there's a backstory to all this, and I'm going to tell you in one second. So why was that important that I wasn't beholden to anyone else? Then people would love me, and I wouldn't have to fear losing my house, moving to public housing, and dying. Why was that important to me? Because I'd feel safe, and then I'd, have enough, I'd, I'd be worthy of people's love. So why was number six, when I was... 10 years old, my parents divorced, my dad was the breadwinner, and he stopped paying for us. And my mom at some point in time said, we may lose this house and have to move into public housing. She was a nurse, and so I would come to her on these visits to this public housing. It wasn't the Bronx, it was Charlottesville, Virginia, but I was a 10-year-old kid, that's all I knew, right? And I'd heard there were shootings. So in my brain, my learned emotional behavior at that time was, if you don't have money, you get kicked out of your house, you go to public housing and you might die. Does that make sense? That is where all of your issues and programming come from today as an adult. Most people don't understand that because your subconscious mind <clears throat> doesn't know the difference between yesterday and 30 or 40 years ago. So the programming, all of us are running right now in this room, we're all just a bunch of six-year-olds. Not at maturity level, but our brains, our brains don't know the difference between you sitting here today, Kelly, as a how old you are, or a six-year-old. So that is what drove me to want to make a billion dollars. Can you see now that that might have been flawed? So what, what, did, this, what did this do? It, it drove me so hard to do everything I could to be the first agent team. I wasn't looking at the bottom line, and I'll explain what that led to in a, in a minute here. It didn't lead to anything good. So on your table right now, You've got that sheet, it's got the, the picture of the root right there. We're going to spend about three minutes. I want you to tell, again, why, at the top of the goal, what is your magic wish? Your, what is your dream goal? What would you like to do? And then just, in, when you answer that, just ask yourself, why is that important? And then go seven levels deep. We may not get to the end today because we've got a lot to cover, but this is something you can go home with. You can share this with your spouse if they're not here. You can ask them the same questions. You can work through this together. And I think a lot of you are going to get to your own answer at number seven. I think Dean said, like, if you're not crying by number seven, you haven't done the exercise right. Uh, you're going to get to something that, that could be really, really enlightening to you. And again, could be the first step for you to take a on, on this journey that's going to, you know, open up things and change your life and business and whatnot. So if we get a little relaxing music, no one can fall asleep here. We're just going to take three minutes. If you can also let me know in three minutes are up and just start filling this out. And if you have any questions, raise your hand and myself or Yvonne, my partner will come around and help you. Did anyone come up with anything that they want to share? Is anyone, did anyone get deep enough that they're like, whoa, now I see what he's talking about. My goal 
is really being driven by something that's underlying that I didn't even think was the reason for my goal. Anyone want to share or did anyone have anything insightful? Come on, vulnerability. Um, I only made it to three, but between one and three, I realized I wanted to recreate my childhood for my kids' childhood in even more than what I had. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? All right, so again, this is an exercise I'm sure you didn't finish. Take it home. Um, you can use it every year as you set your business goal. You can use it every month. It's powerful stuff. So getting to the root is super, super important. So this is probably the most important thing I'm going to say uh, the entire presentation. So your subconscious mind believes that the problem that you have is a solution to something that it perceives as much worse. So I'm going to share an example, uh, but I want to give you a real life example. Is anyone afraid to come uh, speak on stage? Anyone have? It's, one, it's, it's like one of the, well, I think, dying in public speaking, right? Yep. It's one of the, so anyone, anyone afraid to come speak on stage? Okay. So let me just show you this, uh, this example. So the problem is the anxiety, right? Who wants to have anxiety? Uh, no one wants to have anxiety. But it's, that's the problem, right? But it's a solution. So, so when you show up to your therapist with depression and anxiety, that's a solution to something that your mind perceives as even worse. So for the folks that are, I'll give you my example on why I used to be scared to get up on stage. If I get up on stage and I mess up, someone would disparage me and make fun of me just like my dad did. If, does anyone know how many millions of years our brain has been on this planet? Who wants to take a guess? It's a long time, six million years. So if this is six million years, we've only not lived in tribes this long. So if your dad's making fun of you, if your dad doesn't show up to your baseball games, if your parents are fighting all the time, there is, uh, the, the tribe is upset, right? The leaders of the tribe. Back in the day, what would happen if you got thrown out of the tribe? Death, you would die. So I'm convinced in the last six months of doing this work that my brain says, I'm over here, I'm getting ready to go on stage, I'm getting really, really flushed, my chest is feeling tight, but it's, it's doing its job because it says if you get up on stage and you mess up, someone's going to make fun of you just like your dad and you could get kicked out of the tribe and you could die. So whether it's anxiety or the food that you eat or you shut down with your spouse or whatever it is, depression, anxiety, OCD, do you see now that your brain is just doing what it thinks is better than the thing that's over here? Does that make sense? You sure? Because the, like the, you don't hear this. Like Western medicine psychology is let's diagnose you, let's label you, and give you a drug. That's why seventy percent of Americans are on a prescription drug, and unfortunately, a hundred million Americans are on an antidepressant or anti-anxiety drug that don't need to be on it. It's all based on we have a problem over here, but there's something more scary over here. So your brain is actually doing its job. So what we're going to do in this next uh, 45 minutes is we're going to try, try to show you that this thing over here that you're running from is nothing more than an untruth that was formed in childhood. Remember what mine was? Is if my dad makes fun of me, I'm going to get kicked out of the tribe. Well, if I came up on stage and anyone wanted to make fun of me, am I going to die? Am I going to get kicked out of the tribe? No. But that's what's, that was what was root running my life for all these years and it's what's running your life too so let's find that let's show your brain that it's untruth and then boom everything changes because if you once you show your brain that this thing over here that you're running from is untrue you literally reprogram your brain it's called neuroplasticity and then guess what happens to the negative behavior it vanishes it's gone forever because now it's got nothing nothing driving it does that make sense? Please, if it doesn't make sense, raise your hand because this is so important. This is why, this, this right here is why our prisons are full. It's why our hospitals are full. It's why all the, uh, there's a 70% third divorce rate. It's, it's, it's why we have an obesity epidemic. Like everything is revol revolving around this. We're all running from something over here that is nothing more than untruth. It was formed between the ages of like zero and seven. So let's figure that out. Let's show the brain it's untrue. And when we show the brain it's untrue, everything in your life will change. So how, this, is a, this is one of the tools on, that you guys also have that you can take home and work on. 
Uh, I'm gonna go through, through one of my examples and then you can do it. So my problem was uh, feeling enough, right? So why not just focus on that? Well, there's a reason. If I get what I want, which is to feel enough, then a bad thing will happen. So I do what I do at the moment, even though I want the thing I want, because anything, what you put up with or sacrifice is better than the bad thing. The truth that I see now, that's how the whole exercise wraps up. That's the mismatch I was talking about. Once you show your brain that truth, then the negative thing goes away. So let's go over my example. If I feel safe and loved as my authentic self, then I'll have to depend on others for security and they'll let me down and I'll die. I was dependent on my mom for security. She couldn't provide security, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is really bad. So I do what I do at the moment. So I do anything to make tons of money, including taking big risks, and I don't need anyone else. So I took so many risks in business, you can't lose $9 million and not take risks. I was taking these crazy risks doing stuff that I should not have done. Even though I want to feel safe, feel love and be happy with myself and connected to others, because anything, the chaos in my business, taking crazy business risks, not having deeply connected relationships, so me trying to work, make a ton of money, affected my kids, they both had anxiety, affected my marriages, but again, anything is better than being let down by others, running out of money and dying. Does that make sense? You guys have the same exact story in your life that's, that's either running your marriage, your business, your health, whatever it is, it's, it's right here. So you guys can do the same thing. You see at the top of there, if I get what I want, then the bad thing will happen. Just run through this. Run through this tonight, run through it tomorrow. So here's my truth, as I now see it. I am enough and lovable as I am, and I can trust myself and others and the universe and God because they've always provided me with enough money, more than enough money, and they'll continue to do so. Alex, you've got that in your uh, in your packet as well, so you know, <coughs> pictures. You guys with me so far? Yeah. Is this making sense? <laughs> This is, this is life-changing stuff. I know for some of you it's like, wow, this self-love stuff, it seems, seems woo-woo. Um, it's not. Like you can continue living the way you live and think this is woo-woo, or you can be like, wait, I know Joe. I don't know this guy Brad, but I know Joe. I respect her, and she says her life is changing, and she's got nothing. She's just telling you because she's honest and she's a good person. I'm up here telling you my life has changed. A hundred clients of our lives have changed. This stuff is real and it is amazing. I was just going to say, does anybody have a problem that they can't see how that's a solution? That you want to be vulnerable and volunteer while you're in? So does anyone have a problem that they can't see as a solution that they want to be vulnerable and volunteer will work through it? All right. So what is my life like now? I showed you how bad it was. I showed you, and I'm going to show you what it is like now, and then we're going to show you guys how you can get there. So, I have a real estate company called Express Home Buyers. We've bought and sold 4,500 houses. This year we'll do 300 fix and flips and wholesales, mostly in DC, Maryland, Virginia, but we do them all over the country, a handful all over the country. Um, that company completely runs without me. I spend sometimes an hour a month, sometimes two hours a month, I'll show up to a meeting. So why was I able to get there? The old Brad was never able to get there because it was just constant chaos. It was just to go, 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 go. It was hiring the wrong people. I saw someone, I'd be like, oh, that guy Alex, he looks like he's gonna make me a bunch of money. Let's bring him in here. I don't care if he's a fit or not. Let's just bring him in here. So through doing this work and figuring out what were those things that I was running from, I now have this company where the culture has changed Everything has changed, and now I get to do exactly what I love to do and why God put me here, and it was speak to people like you and work with people like Joe and help change their lives. Looking back on why I got into real estate, I got into real estate to make a bunch of money. Again, because I thought money would bring me happiness. I really never cared about real estate. I really care about this stuff. So I vacation a lot. Uh, my relationship with my kids is never better. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm more active at 51 than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm in a wonderful relationship with Yvonne, my business partner and life partner. Uh, it wasn't always that way though. As you can, as I said earlier, things were really rough. I, I was the guy that had put myself in an invisible prison and I didn't know it. Some people know, like your life's really messed up, it's obvious. 
I just made excuses for everything. So what if I smoke weed every night? Who doesn't smoke weed? So what if I drank? You know, my kids have anxiety. Whose kids don't have anxiety? Two divorces? I picked the wrong lady. It was their fault. That was how I rationalized it. Now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, my life is so different now. And it's just based on, again, finding those underlying hidden beliefs that I didn't even know were present. I didn't wake up and say, um, you know, I'm terrible and I've got to make a bunch of money or I'm going to die. It was all driven by my subconscious. So some of you maybe can relate to my story, but I want to share some other examples of what we have found over work. We're working with over 100 entrepreneurs and executives, some business type chaoses that you might be able to um, uh, relate to. So who in this room feels when it comes to business that it's never, never enough? That you're constantly going, going, going. You need more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. That was certainly me. So remember the real estate? Um, who, who, does anyone know these? Uh, well, you obviously know the guy on the left. Does anyone know the two, the two people on the other side of me? Gary Keller's in the middle. Anyone know Leo Pereja? He started and ran and sold Remind, and now he runs EXP. Um, anyway, this photo right here cost me a million dollars. You know why it cost me a million dollars? This, it was the, so in 2008 we started Keller Williams' team. My goal was to be the first agent team to be a billion. We already know why. So I was focused on top line. Sometimes I was hiring five people a week. We woke up, so from 2008 to 2010, we did become the number one uh, Keller Williams team in North America. I think we did like around 800 transactions, and I think it was $125 million or something transactions. But we woke up in like August of 2010. Who was in the business in August of 2010? Do you, do you guys remember what happened then? The first time tax credit went away, and like our portfolio of fix and flips that we thought was worth 24 million was now 21 million. That was pretty much all of our profit. And my partner, who was way better in the financials, was like, Brad, um, we just lost a million dollars in this business. Had we not even started this and just done the fix and flip, we would have another million dollars in the bank. So what, what decisions are you guys making, again, based on driving for something that's, that's being driven by something that's really not uh, serving you. That didn't serve me at all. So a million dollars, that, that's what that photo calls me. So I'm gonna keep that. Uh, so this is, a, this is a question I have for you guys. So my internal challenges like desire for control and thirst, insatiable thirst to prove my worth are the secret sauce that drives me. The fact that I didn't think I was enough, it did drive me. And it, and it did make me a, a lot of money. Do, but do you think that without this, that you can't make any money? Do you think it's a fact or a myth that if I fix my internal problems, I'll lose my drive, and as a result, I won't be successful in business? Who feels that that's a fact? Does anyone think that's a myth? Yeah, it's a complete myth. So what so many of us entrepreneurs in this room, including myself, do is we get into business thinking that when we get over here and we make this amount of money, we're going to find happiness, we're going to find worthiness, right? But again, is that true? <laughs> Look at all the people who have a ton of money that aren't alive anymore because they killed themselves with drugs or alcohol. Money can never do that. The secret is, is today I'm starting to show you how you can have that state that you're desiring over here a couple years from now. You can have that right now. And when you get to that state today, what do you think the chances are of you making that money in the future? Do you think they go up or they go down? They go way up. Because money doesn't bring happiness. They've done studies. Happiness actually brings you money. They've done study after study with college graduates, and they, they asked them their happiness when they graduated, their level of happiness, and then they tracked them through their career. The happier you are, the more money you make. So if you've got some of these underlying beliefs that are driving you, that are causing depression, anxiety, whatever, eating disorders, drinking addiction, you're not doing yourself a favor. I have changed in my last three years. Instead of making money to prove my worth now, I wake up every day and say, how do I make an impact? How can I impact Kelly and Jesse and Helena? When you look in your business, whether it's a, a real estate business, an appraisal business, whatever it is, instead of waking up and saying, how do I make another dollar? You ask yourself, how do I help my employees? How do I make an impact on my customers? The money will come. 
My net worth in the last three years have, has gone up higher than any other three year period in my entire career. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, because I'm not focused on trying to make myself feel good. I'm focused on trying to help other people. So tired of chasing success. Who is tired of chasing success? I was. Anyone else just tired of the constant? Yeah. So this was a house that we bought in 2005 uh, when for the first five months, I remember I bought my first house in 2003, 2005, the first five months, <clears throat> my partner and I on paper had netted a million and a half dollars fixing and flipping houses. So even though my subconscious brain was like, you're not that good, my conscious brain was like, I'm the smartest guy in this room, I don't know what's wrong with these other fix and flippers and wholesalers, I gotta go bigger. So we bought a lot in a house in North Arlington that we were gonna subdivide, knock down, and make a million and a half dollar profit. Well, if we knew what we were doing, we could have looked at the title report and in 15 minutes realized it was a corner lot we couldn't subdivide it. We went hard on the deposit. We literally lost $900,000 on one house. $900,000 on one house. Why? Again, it was my subconscious mind seeing if I make a bunch of money, I'm gonna be worthy. And it turned out that I not only didn't make a million and a half, but I lost 900,000. That was one of the five mistakes. There was three development deals I bought that summer uh, that took us 10 years to extricate ourselves. And of the $9 million, that was $900,000 of $3 million worth of development deals that I did. I had no business doing a development deal. I just started buying houses. Like I didn't even know what the hell I was doing buying houses. And I'm, I, and I'm starting to do development deals and, and not quite ground up construction, but major like renovations on condo conversions. Who had stepped out of their core knowledge and done something and ended up losing money doing it, not knowing what they were doing? Yeah. Do you see now why you may have done it? Not your fault, not your fault. You have the same childhood program, not the same. You have similar childhood programming. It might have been driven by something around survival or around love and acceptance or whatever, whatever it was. But now you guys have the awareness and with the awareness, all change begins. So how about struggling to level up the business? The solution is not what you think it is. You don't need another mastermind. You don't need another marketing campaign. You don't need another business coach. You don't need a new, new fancy CRM. Do you see how destructive the behavior and the thinking that I had? Nine million dollars. I mean, would I like to have my partners, and we're, we're not quite 50-50, I know a little bit more, but I literally would have like, what's, if I can't do the 5.5 million dollars right now more in my bank had I figured this shit out 20 years ago and not made this mistakes. Who else in this room can say that, think about it, think about the money you lost. Could you use that money right now? Who's to say you're not going to make the same mistake? Had I not figured this out, I would have continued making the same mistakes. Dealing with business chaos. Who, does anyone have chaos in their business? Again, it's not because you need another CRM. Why did I have business chaos? I would come to these meetings. I'd see everyone. I'd compare myself. Well, Joe's got a net worth higher than me. Like, I'm dumb. I got to do this, this, and this. I'd come back to my team. I'd be like, we got to drive these initiatives. We got to do these 20 things. It was opening new markets. It was buying houses. It was starting a realty company. All because I'm this little six year old over here, scared and hurt and wanting to do more and more and more so I could feel safety and security. Now, my business, it runs without me. There's no chaos. We don't do everything right, but there's no, I'm not coming in there every day and be like, we gotta do this, this, this. Like, we're on the smooth trajectory, just growing. We're expanding into Virginia Beach. Well, they actually came up with a plan. You know how I expanded Virginia Beach 10 years ago? I got in the car, I drove down, I got an office the day, the, that same day, and I hired five people within a week. We couldn't even get our brochure boxes filled in Northern Virginia, and I was driving to Virginia Beach to open a new market. Why? Again, I had to make money. I had to prove myself. I wanted to be happy. So, can anyone relate to this stuff? <laughs> the high cost of business hustle and overworking. I mean, who, I, have a, I had a client who, he's my age and he can retire. He's done really, really well in real estate, but he's working crazy hours at the expense of his marriage and his kids. Again, why? Because he didn't feel enough. So he just had to keep working, working, working. In my case, I had kids with behavioral problems. I had two failed marriages at the cost of being driven by, boom, the, the wrong thing. The racing mind. 
who can who can equate to this one? The never ending work day. Like I wasn't the guy who worked 80 hours, but my mind never turned off. I can remember being at concerts and talking to my first wife, like sitting in this lawn chair, like, oh my God, this business idea and this business that I did there, and this one and this one, this one. Again, why? Because I was that scared child. Again, I need to do more, 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 more. When you don't feel enough, it's never enough. It doesn't matter if you have a million dollars or a hundred million dollars. It's never enough. So why do uh, business coaching, mindset courses, therapy, couples therapy have not work? I probably went to 50 different marriage counseling sessions. This is why it doesn't work. I touched on it earlier. Because you've got to get to the, the root of the problem. Most courses don't get to the root of the problem. They just dance around the symptoms and, and how to fix the symptoms. Okay, so I was unaware. A lot of people are unaware. So I want you guys to do, this is another, um, it's not interactive, it will only take you two and a half minutes. Either scan this, take this quiz. This is going to show you your level of uh, self-love, which is a clear indication of if you have these underlying limiting beliefs that are driving chaos in your business, driving relationship problems, driving uh, lack of performance in your business. So two minutes and 45 seconds. If we can get some relaxing music, that would be awesome. Be like. If all the answers were never, one of the questions is uh, like how other people upset you. Before my transformation three and a half years ago with this Navy SEAL, we were having dinner in Park City, and he was like, I'm gonna get to the point in my life where nobody or situation can negatively impact me. And I looked, I thought to myself, this guy's a complete idiot. And now here I am three and a half years later, and I am way, 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 way closer. So that's another thing I think about true liberation is hardly anything bothers me anymore because it's never the actual situation. It's never about the argument with your spouse. It has nothing to do with the argument. It has us, our childlike brain, going back to a time in the past and bringing a meaning into that. Think about it. Every event is meaningless. We, we, we attach a meaning to every single event. Did you ever think about that? What if you could just see events for the way that they are? Why, why do we ever have to get pissed off, mad, sad, or angry? We, we, we don't. So... <clears throat> I'm going to highlight a couple of questions uh, on the self-love quiz. I think we just do, do four of these. The whole purpose of this is to get you guys thinking of, wow, maybe, maybe I do have something underlying that's either affecting my business, my health, my relationships, my finances, whatever it is. So do you have trouble experiencing deeply connected intimate, intimate relationships with some you feel safe with? Well, my answer now is never, but it used to be uh, always. Who, who feels in their intimate relationships like, like this? Like, you know, it's two bulls butting heads. My ex-wives would come to me with a problem, and I would turn it on them. It would be their problem. That would be the fight part. And then the fight part would be for three days, I would be like cold and distant. I have this anxiety. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't stand it. Now it's completely different because, again, I've gone back to those untruths. If you guys have kids with behavioral problems, they act up, they've got depression, anxiety, they're doing bad in school, and you want to know the, the reason for the source, just grab your spouse, go to the mirror, go to the, the bathroom and look in the mirror. Because almost always it's the parents. It's the parents. Notice I didn't say it's your fault, because we as parents are doing the absolute best we can, but if we grew up with this stuff and we have not solved this, there's no way that you're not causing your kids issues. My kid's anxiety was because of me and the lady that I picked. And I, my subconscious mind picked her for a reason. So now, when your mind comes to me with a problem, um, instead of saying, no, it's your fault, and then flee from her, because I don't have this underlying, I'm not enough, I can actually say, okay, let's work on this. Let's figure this out. And my relationship is completely different than, than it's ever been before. Do you talk negatively to yourself on a regular basis? I used to. Who, 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 who to this day talks negatively to themselves? Anyone want to be vulnerable? Yeah. Do you know that when you talk negatively to yourself, your brain doesn't realize the difference between you doing it and a complete stranger doing it? So what happens? Your brain releases cortisol. What's cortisol? Cortisol is an inflammatory. It causes inflammation in your body. What is the basis of probably 75% of every disease, illness, and autoimmune in this world? Inflammation. Stop talking negatively to yourself. If you wouldn't say it to your best friend, don't say it to yourself. Anything that you say that's negative to yourself, I promise you it's an untruth. It is that underlying thing. I'm not pretty enough, I'm not smart enough, whatever it is, it's all a lie. It's just, it's just what you came up with as a child to get you through a stressful situation. 
So yeah, cut that out. Uh, be your own best friend. Do you take take things personally? Frequently get upset by others' actions. This is the meaning part. Like, what's we don't have to get upset by others' actions. We get upset because we place we we call meaning into it. And then substances. Uh, old Brad, drinking a shot with my buddy Joe. Um, 